Jurs Summerland is the best park in all of Denmark. While it may not be the oldest amusement park like Bakken, or the most famous like Tivoli Gardens, I think it offers the strongest overall package. Coaster enthusiasts are likely familiar with this park's trio of Intamin coasters, but it also features underrated theming and impeccable customer service. Find out why this park should not be missed in this review. Jurs Summerland opened back in 1981. The park is located in Imtofte on Jersland, which is a peninsula with some of Denmark's most popular beaches. The park owners wanted to provide Danes with a family-friendly activity, and they selected this location to attract tourists on days when the weather was not suitable for the beach. For its first decade, Jurs had playgrounds, some theming, a water park, and just one mechanical ride. They didn't transform into a traditional amusement park until the 1990s, when they started adding more rides as a result of guest feedback. The park's growth has been particularly noteworthy since the turn of the millennium. Roughly 90% of their rides and all their coasters have been built over the past two decades. And as their attraction offerings have grown, Jurs has also had new themed lands. Going into my visit, I didn't realize just how nicely themed this park would be. The coasters have elaborately themed stations both on the inside and outside. Midways have thematic displays, including animatronics. Staff members are dressed for their respective areas. For example, those in the pirate area dress and behave like pirates. Then each area had atmospheric music and the signature rides had custom soundtracks. The use of audio was fantastic. The park now features nine themed areas. Summerland is located in the center of the park. This is the one area that isn't really themed. More or less, it's a giant area to relax and play. Here, you'll find open grassy areas for lounging and plenty of play spaces. You have trampolines as far as the eye can see, plus some climbs and slides. Pirate Land is my favorite area. This pirate-themed land has nautical theming all about, and the energy of the staff members is infectious. I love how the crews of both Piraten and Skatoween had water guns to blast guests. You would never see that in America. Bone de Guards Land is a giant farm. This is a colorful area targeted towards kids with animal themed rides and displays. Dinosaur Land is the newest section. This area feels much more open, but you have some excavation play areas and giant dinosaur statues by the mechanical rides. Vikingi Land is themed to Vikings. The rides all interact with the water and the wooden architecture fits the land perfectly. Plus, you have references to Norse mythology. Africa Land is a smaller section with a woodsy jungle vibe. Mexico Land has that jungle aesthetic of Africa, but it also incorporates the structural stylings of the Mayans. Western Land is an American Wild West area. You see these all throughout Europe, but I like the activities and shop fronts of the company of the rides, so I don't mind this theme being used once again. Wild Asia has an oriental theme. Multiple rides feature temples in the queue line or ride path. Then you also have a nice entry reveal. The parking lot is a giant grassy field lined with trees. You cannot see any of the rides from here. You then have a long walk with trees on both sides, and as you get closer to the entrance, you'll start to hear the park's main theme increase in volume. Eventually you'll reach the main entrance, and you'll hear that cheerful tune playing on loop in full audio. You'll also catch a glimpse of two of the park's most popular rides. You have Piraten off to the right, and Drow Kong off to the left. Seeing these two rides in close proximity really gets you hyped for your day. Then when you enter the park, you have a central hub that branches off to the themed areas. Most people head to Pirat Land or Wild Asia first because they're the front two areas, so you can get a leg up on most people if you zag when they zig. I know most coaster enthusiasts will be tempted to start with Piraten, but that coaster needs a few hours to warm up. I was a little underwhelmed by my morning rides to be honest, but my afternoon rides delivered the elite experiences this ride is known for. Instead, I would start with Drow Kong, as long as you're one of the first people in the park. If the front row line is short when you reach the end of the queue, take advantage of that. You then want to reach Juvelin by noon. As you head back there, I would take laps on Tigurin, two of the water rides in Long Con Expedition and Rio Grande Rafting, and Vilda Hunziat if you want the credit. After Juvelin, I would hit Thor's Hammer and the rides in Dinosaur Land since they'll only get busier as the day progresses. At this point, I would use the park's handy dandy app that includes the wait times. You then want to start making your way towards the front towards Pirate Land. 
feel free to hit some of the smaller rides on the way that have minimal weights. Lines drop dramatically during the last 1-2 to two hours for the Intamins, so that is prime time to get re-rides on Juvelin, Pierrotin, and Draukong. The worst lines I saw at the park on a summer day were 40-60 to 60 minutes for Draukong shortly after opening, and Juvelin midday. Most other coasters and water rides had 15-30 to 30 minute waits throughout the day. I heard the day of the week doesn't impact crowds too much at Jurors, but the time of year sure does. Summer is understandably their busiest period. Lines moved at a steady rate thanks to fast operations. While the coasters don't see too many people per train, the staff members avoid stacking in most cases, and they manage to remain efficient while having a good time with guests. These are some of the nicest employees I've encountered at any park. They will bend over backwards to make sure you have an incredible day. They are extremely knowledgeable and we're almost always pumping guests up for their rides. Now let's talk about the ride lineup. Juris currently has 8 different roller coasters and they do a good job satisfying all thrill levels. Die Hard coaster fans will come here for Piraten. This is one of the few Intamin Megalites that was ever built and for years it found itself near the top of the Mitch Hawker coaster pole. While this ride doesn't have the height of a hyper coaster, it offers a similarly dynamic ride chock full of ejector airtime. The S hills in the middle of the ride are some of the most violent airtime hills of any ride. I have a separate review in this coaster, but this is probably the best coaster in all of Denmark. Juvelin is a multi-launch motorbike coaster. This ride is all about speed. You have two punchy launches, and then you hug the ground, whizzing past trees, ruins, and waterfalls. The start of the second half feels completely out of control, and this is the motorbike coaster with the best sense of speed in my opinion. See my review if you want to hear more. Drow Kong is the prototype Intamin family suspended coaster, but it has some underrated positive Gs. Every single valley in turn will have the blood flowing to your feet. Add in an abundance of leg choppers and some nice theming, particularly during the theatrical launch out of the station, and you have a great overall package. The one downside is that this coaster already has a rattle, but the open restraints prevent this from being a deal breaker as I cover in a review. Thor's Hammer is the park's oldest operating coaster, and it's a Gerslauer bobsled with the same layout as Tripstrol's Cassente Sao. This Wild Mouse variant has some hairpin turns, but it does so much more with some fun helixes and nice hills with some floater airtime. And I really like how this ride winds around trees, goes through buildings, and passes above the water. Skatoween is the park's only water coaster. Built by Mach, this ride has some nice theming in the queue line and pre-lift section. The large spiral on the coaster bit feels a bit gimmicky, but the final drop sequence is great. The largest drop has some airtime, and then you have a fun speed hill before the final splashdown. Just avoid the front row if you want your feet to come off dry, as I said in my review. Then you have three smaller coasters, all of which can be experienced without kids if you want the credits. T-Rex Family Coaster opened this year, and it's a powered creation from Mach. The layout is mild, but it's a smooth and comfortable ride for all ages that has onboard audio plus dinosaurs. Vilde Hunsiat is a junior coaster that winds its way through a barnyard. The ride is smooth outside of the final break and offers two laps. Jungle Rally is the park's smallest kiddie coaster, but it's a newer model free of any jerky transitions or discomfort. Speaking of kids, this park does a really good job catering to them. Bon de Guards Land is their primary area for kids with all the small roundabouts and animal themed attractions, but there's something for them in each area as well. Every single land has at least one and sometimes multiple play structure for them to burn off energy. Heck, the parking lot even has a climbing structure for them. Where else would you see that? And these structures aren't just for kids. Adults are more than welcome to use them too. Then you'll find plenty of family rides in each section as well. This is primarily done through their water and flat ride collection. The ride lineup is extremely well balanced top to bottom. The park doesn't have too many throwing flats, but their signature one more than makes up for it. Tigeran is an Intamin gyro swing, and I think it's the best frisbee ride in the world, which I stated in my review. The ride has impressive height and speed. Then you are essentially restrained by just a lap bar that leaves your entire upper body free to experience the airtime, and there's plenty of it. Every single max swing delivers oodles of sustained floater airtime, and the downswings juxtapose that with nice positive forces. The other notable flat rise Canny Bell Coularne. While Efteling was asked to re-theme their cannibal-themed teacup ride, Jurors still has theirs. 
but this ride is most notable for just how dizzying it can be. This technical park creation has some of the easiest cups to spin, and when combined with the rotation of the platform, I got some crazy centripetal forces. I came off not able to walk straight. Then, while Denmark doesn't get the hottest, Jers is no shortage of water rides. I already covered their water coaster, but you have several other options as well. Long Con Expedition is a big country motioneering log flume. The layout is scenic, going into the woods and around a rock structure. Then there are three drops. They aren't overly thrilling, but the second one will drench you head to toe. Rio Grande Rafting is an interlink river rapids ride, more about the visuals than the water effects. The rapids barely sent more than a trickle into the boat, and the geysers and waterfalls were more for show. But I like the location in the woods and the western sets you pass. Speedy Gonzalez is a self-operated water slide that consists of a triple down, and that second hump will lift your entire raft off the slide. And if you're worried about getting wet, this barely gives you more than a misting. If you want to get drenched though, you have a full-fledged water park in the back. I skipped this due to time, but there is a half-pipe slide and one of those old-school tube slides with elements of a rapids ride, plus some other normal attractions. Last but not least, Jurors does not have any dark rides, but the use of theming around the park compensates in my opinion, although I certainly wouldn't mind if they added a dark ride in the future because they do theming so well. Since there was so much I wanted to do with this park, I only grabbed one meal after the park closed and that was at their fish and chip stand in the pirate area. It was decent, a little pricey for the portion size, but the quality was good. I think the price to visit this park is more than fair though considering all the rides and theming. It costs roughly 315 Danish krona or $42 as of 2022, and parking is 100% free as well. I drove to the park because I was coming from Copenhagen, but I believe I could have reached the park using a train to Aarhus and a bus that got close to the park. So do I recommend Jura's Summerland? Absolutely. It has something for everyone. You have a top tier coaster in Piraten, plus a deep supporting lineup of roller coasters and other rides, plus theming for all ages. I knew I'd like the trio of Intamin coasters, but I was shocked how great this park was in the other areas such as theming and customer service. This ended up being my favorite park in Denmark, and I cannot wait to return someday. This is one of the more underrated parks in all of Europe. So those are my thoughts on Jura's Summerland. What are your thoughts on this Danish theme park? Is it your favorite park in this country as well? Let me know down below. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.